while researching the history of Blackburn recently for another video, I found out about the tragic murder of Alice Beatham, and I wanted to share her story here. Alice Beatham and Arthur Burkitt were dating, or courting as it might have been known at the time, and they were also work colleagues. They both worked at Jubilee Mill in Blackburn, which was a cotton mill. You can see Jubilee Mill on screen here, but I think it might have been a bit bigger at the time of the events, which was May 1912. Now Alice was a pretty young woman and was just 18 years old, and Arthur was 22 years old and had been seeing Alice for about five weeks at the time of the incident. On the 16th of May 1912, Alice broke up with Arthur for reasons unknown. She told Arthur she no longer wanted to be with him and that their courtship should cease. The 17th of May, Alice told her friend, Mrs Lily Wagg, who was also a work colleague, that she'd broken up with Arthur. And later that night, Arthur himself called at Lily's home, upset about the breakup and told Lily that Alice had chucked him. Lily's husband, trying to cheer Arthur up, later told him there's plenty of more women besides her and Lily would try to console Arthur, saying there's plenty more, Arthur, but visibly upset, Arthur said, I'll chop her head off. On the morning of the 20th of May 1912, at 6am, both Arthur and Alice made their way to work at Jubilee Mill. But Arthur, instead of taking his breakfast break, went out to a nearby shop and purchased a razor blade. Throughout the morning, Alice would have to pass Arthur while carrying weft to the weavers who were waiting for the raw material in the weaving shed, but she ignored Arthur on more than one occasion. Around 8.45 that morning, Alice passed Arthur one last time. He took hold of her and said something that seemed to annoy her. Susie Tattersall, a witness who worked at the mill, saw Arthur grab Alice from behind jerking her head backwards using his left arm. At first, Susie thought he was just going to give Alice a kiss on her cheek, only because she knew that they'd been dating before. However, unknown to Susie and the other witnesses, Arthur was holding the razor blade in his right hand, which he drew quickly across Alice's neck, almost severing her head from her body. Such was a force that he used. Arthur then turned the razor blade on himself and twice tried to cut his own neck. But John Edward Dewhurst, who was one of the workers nearby, ran over to Arthur and knocked him to the floor. Other witnesses ran over and tried to help Alice, but sadly it was too late and she passed away quickly. The police were quick to arrive from nearby Coppinuck police station and Arthur was taken away under guard to the infirmary where his neck wounds were treated. At his trial, Arthur pleaded not guilty on the grounds of insanity, but the judge summing up said, Arthur Burkitt, you have been found guilty upon the clearest evidence of a very, very cruel murder, the murder of your sweetheart, a murder premeditated, determined and cruel. You have forfeited your life, make peace with your maker, I implore you. His mother petitioned the Home Secretary and the Queen trying to get a reprieve, but on the morning of the 23rd of July 1912, Arthur was taken from his cell in Strangeways Prison to the place of his execution and he was hung at the gallows. Well, I'm here at Blackburn Cemetery and I've come to pay my respects to Alice. Having researched her story, uh, I think it's a very sad and tragic story. Uh, I wasn't able to find a grave, unfortunately. I, I underestimated the size of uh, the old Blackburn Cemetery. It's massive and there's hundreds, if not thousands of graves here. Uh, and Alice is in an unmarked grave as well. So it makes it very difficult. I did have a photograph, which I was trying to track down the grave, but I've not been able to find it. Uh, but even so, uh, I'd like to say rest in peace to Alice and bless you. Uh, you was taken too soon and it's a very sad story.